Well, let's bring in Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates. Congressman Gates, good to have you on, my friend. Um, well, oh, listen, thanks, what do you expect? Let, we're calling this a pre buttle and, and Matt, I'm already gone through the numbers, and anything economic that he wants to throw out there, we can rebut him right there, pre him right now. Let's start with inflation. He says it, it was high inflation when he took over. Care to weigh in? Yeah, the principal driver of inflation in the Biden economy has been reckless government spending. We've seen it over and over again, and there seems to be no limit to it. We now have had 21 straight months where inflation has outpaced wage growth. We've seen five straight weeks where gas prices have been rising. The only reason there was a temporary respite in gas prices was because President Biden was playing politics with the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. And so now as the Congress gathers to receive the State of the Union, we recognize that our country is poorer, less safe and less productive than we were during the Trump presidency. And that's something Joe Biden will have to answer for. You know, he does this time and time again. And if I can get the control room to throw up that inflation chart, when he took over, President Trump left him 1.4 percent inflation. The minute he took over, it started to go up. And for a year and a half, it didn't peak until June of 2022 when it hit 9.1 percent, Matt. And now it backed off to six and change or so. And somehow he thinks that's an accomplishment, bringing inflation from 1.4 percent to six and a half. And somehow he's going to take a victory lap. Well, this is the highest inflation certainly we've seen in a generation. And if printing money made your country stronger, then Zimbabwe would be the strongest country on the planet Earth. But of course, it isn't because the financial policies that Joe Biden has embraced have really drained a lot of the productive energy that Donald Trump put into the economy. We've had too much cash, not enough work. And that's why to raise the debt limit, I'm pushing fellow Republicans to demand work requirements on some of our social safety net programs for able-bodied, working-age adults who could go to work and choose not to. I think Joe Biden has to answer why we continue to provide those people with health care, transportation, child care, cell phones, all of the trappings of American life. And I wonder also why we give tax credits to illegal aliens. Right now, illegal aliens are able to access the earned income tax credit, the child tax credit. And if we got rid of the magnets that are drawing people across our borders illegally, we could reduce spending and we could start to address the crisis at our border. I expect that when Joe Biden talks about borders and territorial integrity, he'll be talking more about Ukraine than about what's happening on the U.S.-Mexico border. Indeed, he may he may entirely ignore our own southern border. But, Matt, you know, he'll take likely take credit for a gas price that's gone from five dollars to about three forty or so right now. But he forgets that first part under him. And if we have that other chart, the gasoline chart control room, when he took over, gas was two dollars and thirty nine cents a gallon. And that, those are right from the Department of Energy. That's their number right there. It, that's Biden term right there. That's Biden. So he brought gas from low twos up to five, back to three and a half, and somehow he will probably take credit for that as well. Well, that would be a lot like a firefighter taking credit after also being the arsonist, because Joe Biden created the conditions by attacking the U.S. energy sector that drove up prices, that for the long term decreased investment in energy production so that we would be less reliant on foreign places. And then to say that because he was able to tap the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, we saw some temporary reduction in gas prices ignores the fact that during President Trump's tenure, we were paying two bucks and change for gas. Now it is considerably higher. And, you know, Eric, you know this because you've been all over this country. It hurts people in rural America the most. Democrats want to know why they have problems in rural America. Look at what they do to people when they have to go fill up that gas tank to go to work, to take their kids to baseball and soccer practice. It's been really tough for a lot of Americans. And so if Joe Biden overplays his hand here, if he acts as if the economy is terrific and everything is great, then he'll risk really being disconnected with the lived experiences of our fellow Americans who still have a great deal of economic anxiety. Oh, he will, Matt. Oh, he will. He'll overplay his hand. He'll lie. He'll embellish. He'll take credit for stuff that's not there. Congressman Matt Gates, good, good to have you. I appreciate your time. Got to get inside, folks. They got to be inside before they lock the doors down at 8:25 or 8:30. Congressman, good to have you. Thank you.